Back on my World Cup, this time Sabella from Team US Northeast versus Trosco from Team Spain. Got a pretty standard team here on Trosco's side, but probably Rock Swish Clefable. I assume it's either Bandit or Weakness Policy Zygarde, most likely a Scarf Landers, a Spadef Spikes, Ferrothorn, Zemo Feature, and a Megalardi with Ice Beam, Earthquake, Psychic, and Recover. And yeah, Wish Pass is amazing for months like Scarf, Lando, Spadef, Feral, Zemo Trend because it doesn't have Lefty, so it likes Wish support. And Zygarde also um, appreciates it a lot. And on Sabella's side, I assume either the Lily or Grand could be Zemo, probably Scarf, Landris. Then one of these two has to be Spadef to check Ninja, and one of them has to be Fist Death to deal with stuff like Katana. And then the Trend is going to be the Rocker, most likely on Sabella's side. Um, Negalati is annoying for. Sabella's team it beats like this, 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 and Lele takes like a decent chunk from Ice Beam or Earthquake. Lando can't switch in, and Greninja is like the only thing that can switch in at least once, guaranteed. Unless it has Draco, but Draco is like not common on Megalardi. And um, on Sabella's side, Lele is a big threat to Trosko's team. Because Lele can, um, if it's choice specs, it can just spam Psychic versus Trosco's team, especially with Hazards up, that's gonna be annoying. Because he doesn't have a Dark type, so Lele can freely click Psychic if it's specs. And even if it's Z move, it can probably um, get a kill with either CM uh, Psychium or with All Out Pummeling. So turn one, we have a Pharaoh versus Greninja here. So Trosco's potential play here is you either spike if you're Trosco, or you go hard into Landris. Because going hard into Landris scouts for the Greninja having either Low Kick or HP Fire. Because we don't know yet if the Greninja is Protein or um, Battle Bond. And if Sabella has a move to hit the Ferrothorn, I think he's just gonna go for it. If he doesn't have a move to hit the Ferrothorn, he's probably just gonna switch into his Heatran. Um, those are the plays, pretty much. He does go hard Heatran, which means he most likely doesn't have a move to hit the Ferrothorn. Now, one of the two Heatran checks has to come out, which is either the Mega Ladi or the Zygarde. I assume Sabella is just gonna get the rocks up. Zygarde does come out. Um, most likely Tangrowth or Landris is gonna come out here for Sabella. Trosco doubles into Clefable anticipating um, either Lando or Tangrowth to come out and I assume Trosco just wants to get the rocks up. Sabella can either go for a knockoff here to get rid of the Clefable's leftovers or he can switch out into either the Heatran or the Tapu Lele. Um, most likely Tapu Lele I think is a good play because it puts a lot of offensive pressure. Like I said he has no dark type so if it specs it just clicks that psychic stab. stab. And something takes a lot of damage. And especially because Trosco cannot really um like Trosco cannot really go Ferrothon on the Lele ever because he needs the Ferrothon to check the Greninja. So yeah, I'm pretty sure Trosco's just gonna get the rocks up here. And like I said, either knockoff is gonna come out or a hard switch into Lele or Heatran from Sabella's side. Most likely Lele because it offers more offensive uh, pressure. And Trosco has no guaranteed switch into it. So Lele comes out expecting the rocks as the rocks go up. And pretty sure you just click your psychic step, no matter if it's psychic or psyshock. Because even if the Heatran switches in, next turn, um, like you, you weaken Heatran, and if it's not lefties, if it's Z move, it gets chipped a lot with rocks and with psychic terrain boosted um, step from the Lele. And if the Clef stays in, it might just get blown away. So. And like I said, he can't really go Pharaoh on this because um, that's his main Greninja check. So it's either stay in here or go into Heatran. Because, like, Clefable is kind of useful, but it's not that great to have. Like, he has. Like, it's good for the Tangros and it's good to pivot into the Toxapex, but Megalady can also do that, so he doesn't really need the Clef for that. Um, the only reason that, uh, why the Clef would be valuable is um, it's a good Scarf Lando check. And it also is a good check for um, if the Greninja is Ash and it, the Ferrothorn gets low, then Dark Pulse is a huge problem for Trosco because Greninja can get Battle Bond and potentially sweep him. So having Clef around for that as a Dark Resist can be useful. But other than that, Clef is not too, too useful. So he might just stay in or, like I said, go Heater. And those are the only plays. And yeah, you just click your Psychic Stab if you're... Um, Sabella Bob, <laughs> that's definitely choice back Tabu Lele, and the cleft just goes down. So now we're gonna see either the Heatran or the Ladi come out here, most likely from Trosco's side. So Ladi comes out, and Ladi is um, super annoying for Sabella. So either Ice Beam or Earthquake is gonna come out. Um, because even, like, Greninja can switch in once, but it has to take Rocks, Spikes, and Ice Beam or Earthquake. So, like, it's not a good switch in at all. So, like, Sabella. 
only has two plays here. It's either stay in, click Psychic again, um, which means you probably use your Tapu Lele in the process unless you get a Spadef drop. Because this, if Psychic Terrain runs out, Psychic is not going to do enough to the Megalady in the long run. Um, but yeah, this Psychic, if uh, Sabella stays in, is going to do a lot to Megalady because Megalady usually runs minus Spadef. Because it still checks stuff like Heatran that it needs to check with minus Spadef. And you usually don't want to be minus defense, so that way you can check stuff like Kartana better, you can take U-turn from Scarf Landris better if you're not minus defense. So they usually run minus Spadef Megalades. But yeah, I assume you see Ice Beam or Earthquake here. Probably Ice Beam from Trosco's side. And Sabella decides to stay in, so he just spams Psychic. He's obviously um, locked into that and does 58. But yeah, Trosco can click Recover. And Psychic Terrain ends in a few turns, which means um, Ladi beats this 1v1. Unless the Lily gets a Spadef drop. So you can see that Ice Beam does a good chunk. And at this point, the Lele is low. And I'm pretty sure Sabella is just going to stay in with the Lele. So there's the Roost. Psychic comes out, 56. Gets a Spadef draw, which means the Ladi is forced out here. Pretty sure Earthquake um, or Ice Beam both don't kill. So now he's forced into um, Ferrothon or Heatran. But yeah, Ferrothon comes out. That's, uh, that's annoying for Trosco, there's another Spadef drop, that doesn't matter too much, uh, Psychic Terrain ends here and the Lily is gonna be forced out anyway. Well, I guess Sabella can potentially attack again and weaken this Fog of Ninja, but now that... Yeah, I think you wanna switch out now and still keep the Lily around. Uh, so what do, you, what do you switch into here? You switch into either Heatran or Landris if you're Sabella, and if you Trosco, you either click Lead Sheet or Power Whip. Um, yeah, knockoff knock is an option as well. Knockoff, Leech Sheet, Power, one of the three are options. So Landris comes out. Um, I'm thinking Sabella wants to get off a Defog. That's like the main reason why you would go Landris. Chipping Landris is nice because it's one of the Zygar checks. So that's nice for Trosco. So I think Sabella is just going to Defog. Trosco can uh, either Leech Sheet or Spike here. Uh, most likely you, you want to Spike here because you want to chip... Um, yeah, you want to chip Sabella's team, and if you especially chip down Greninja, Megalady can potentially win you the game. So now the Heatran is... The Landris is locked into Defog, it's pretty obvious that it's Choice Scarf. So Trosco can potentially pull a double here. Uh, I think double into Megalady is a good play, because Megalady... Like, let's say Sabella wants to go into Toxapex, Heatran or Tangros, all three that would come in on Ferrothorn. If you double to Megalady, you cover all of them. And if you get Lari in on Tangros or Toxapex, you can potentially get a recover up. If you get it in on Heatran, same thing. So Heatran comes out, does he go Lari? No, he doubles into Lanarus, also a fine play. So I think he's gonna just click U-turn here, expecting um, a switch into Tangros or Landris from Sabella's side. Let's see if Sabella wants to um, pull a switch. He does have Protect, so Sabella doesn't have to play um, like, he can just click Protect, see what Trosco locks himself into, and I assume he can just get his rocks up here, knowing that the Lanus is locked into U-turn. Zygarde comes out, so now Sabella has to go into either Tangros or Landorus. Um, Trosco is either just gonna attack or double out. He could... Like, if he gets a double into Lari on the Tangros, that would be good for him, but yeah, Sabella goes into Lando. I think that's uh, the... The reason why I like the Landorus play is because... If Trosco doubled to Lari, they're breaking the Tangros, then Trosco could have recovered with the Lari. And Sabella wants to keep the Lari low, so going Leno there, and if he covered to the Lari, then you can U-turn and pick off the Lari. Um, now you don't want to U-turn though, because you took the Thousand Arrows, which means you're in range to die from Iron Barbs from the Ferrothorn. Um, but I think Trosco is gonna switch into... Yeah, either Lando or Ferro might come out, or Heatran. Lando, Ferro, Heatran, one of the three. Because um, Tros Sabella's play there is either double, or U-turn, he's not gonna Earthquake that turn, is what I'm trying to say. That's why I said Heatran. I know it sounds wild to potentially go Heatran on a Landris. So now Trosco can U-turn, and then will he will find out if the Tangros is AV or Helmet. And Sabella is most likely just gonna click Knock Off here to get rid of an item. And I'm pretty sure the Mega Lati is too low to come in uh, after Rocks to take a Knock Off. Like, it's super low the Lati, so it cannot take a Knock Off. Um, probably not even with the Intimidate. If it can take a Knock Off, then uh, HPS is the better play here. I don't remember how healthy exactly the Lari is. I think it was at like 30-ish, something like that, or maybe 28. Don't really remember, but I assume Knockoff is overall the best play. So Ferrothon comes out, and Knockoff gets rid of the leftover. So Greninja just became more threatening, no lefties on the Ferrothon. He doubles out into Heatran, anticipating the anticipating the Toxapex to come out. I, th I think that's what he predicted. Um, and yes, yeah, Sabella went for Focus Blast. 
which hits the ferrosol and also covers the heat transfer switching. So Focus Blast, the reason why you run that on Tangos, it is to Oko Katana. If you don't have HP Fire, you cannot Oko Katana unless you run Focus Blast. And if you have Focus Blast, you can't run HP Fire. Uh, no, I was going to say, I mixed that up. I was going to say, if you run HP Eyes, you want to run HP Eyes to beat Zygarde guaranteed, and you also run to Oko Katana. So uh, I assume he's going to rec recover spam. He just scores here. Okay. So, um... He scores that brick in the taunt from the Heatran. He's able to kill the Heatran. Trosco can now go into Ladi and click recover. So I guess he um yeah, he didn't care too much if the Toxapex comes in on the thingy. That lets him heal as Ladios. Now um Trosco can if he lives a U-turn, which I think U-turn does like 52 to Megalady, so he can potentially just recover here predicting the U-turn. Uh, well, I don't know if he wants to U-turn here, actually, because if Pharaoh comes out, he dies to U-turn. Hmm. Well, that might that might be fine for Sabella, because the... What's it called? The Pharaoh song, if that Pharaoh song gets weakened even more, then... Greninja kind of just runs through Trosco's team. The only way he can check the Greninja with his Ferrosome being low. He doubles in the Heatran, breaking the Ferrosome. Okay, calm down, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, he doesn't. He probably doesn't want to U-turn. And that, so that was a that was a good play because even if the Ladi stayed in, it would have gone for Ice Beam. Um, well, if Ladi stayed in there, the yeah, Ladi could have stayed in and gone for Recover because I don't think U-turn kills. But yeah, Lava Plume gets a burn, um, so he's probably Spadeftran because he's um, Protect Lava Plume uh, Rocks Tran. With leftovers, so he makes a good play there, Trosco. Um, he can just uh, ice beam here, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So Tr um, Sabella predicted him to go for recover and went hard into Landris, but yeah, now the Greninja comes in and Greninja just claims a kill. I assume this has. It's either Dark Pulse Battle Bond or Ice Beam Protein, one of the two, and pretty much no matter what, he gets a kill with Greninja here. So he's Ice Beam Bob, and. Um, Trosco has to go into his Landris to force this out. Because I think the Ferrozone is pretty weakened. I, I don't remember how low the Ferrozone is. But yeah, I assume um, the Tangros comes out here from Sabella's side. Because if the Landris goes for U-turn, it gets chipped from Rocky Helmet. And it also gets chipped every time from Rocks. Um, he might just click off quick because he doesn't want to potentially let... Um, he doesn't want to take Rocky Helmet from the Tang. But the Tang is like risk-free for Sabella. No matter what Trosco does here. Trosco can potentially double into Megalady again, expecting the Tangros. Also, earlier I mixed up my words, like... Uh, so the reason why you run Focus Blast on Tang is... If you have HP Ice to deal with Zygarde, but you still want to Oko Kartana, then you run Focus Blast. Because you obviously can't run Hidden Power Fire if you have HP Ice already. I don't know why that was so hard for me to explain earlier. I mixed up my words. But I think... Sabella always goes Tangros here, you never stay in with the Greninja, because the Greninja pretty much gets a kill when it comes in on the Ladi. I don't know if it gets a kill on the Ferrothorn, because I don't know how healthy the Ferrothorn is, but I'm pretty sure Ferro might be in range as well. So he doubles into Ladi, expecting the Tangros. Um, Sabella goes Heatran. Okay, so he goes Heatran there, because um, one, he doesn't need the Heatran to win, or two, he predicted a U-turn. So he just goes for Lava Plume, expecting the Ruse, he can potentially get a burn. So I assume Trosco is um, just gonna click Earthquake here. Sabella can either sack the Heatran or sack the Lele. So he does eat that up. So I assume Lava Plume comes out again. Does he not have Toxic or why is he clicking Lava Plume? Or he might just want guaranteed damage because Toxic can potentially miss. So the Ladi, even if it recovers, I think Protein Greninja always comes in after the Heatran dies and gets a kill with Ice Beam because, like I said earlier, Ladi usually runs minus Spadef Mega Ladi. So yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, Sabella has this game wrapped up. So the Heatran goes down, Greninja comes out, and the Ninja just clicks Ice Beam here. Trosco has to pick if he wants to sack either the Mega Ladi or the Ferrothorn because he obviously needs the Greninja alive, the Greninja... Uh, the Landris. I meant the Landris, I'm mixing up my words, it's late here. He needs the Landris alive because that's the only one that outspeeds the Greninja because it's Choice Scarf Landris. So he has to pick the fodder, either Pharaoh or Ladi. And even though the Lando, yes, it can force out the Gren, it has to take rocks every time it comes in, it gets chipped. And Sabella has one more sack and he can just um, go Tang or Pex whenever the um, 
Lando comes out. He most likely Tang. Yeah, Tang is free. So um, this I think is most likely it doesn't do it kill, but he gets the freeze. Actually, it does do it kill because he knocked off the leftovers earlier. I assumed that the leftovers are going to bring it in range where it doesn't do it kill. But yeah, I would have do it killed anyway. Landris now forces out the Greninja, and yeah, Trusco has to pretty much hope that Sabella stays in here and throws the game. But Sabella shouldn't do that. You can just go Tangrowth here. If Trosco earthquakes, then um, Tangos eats it up. If Trosco U-turns, uh, he has to take more chip. And even if he doubles into Megalady and he gets it correct, then the Megalady gets a kill. So let's say he doubles into Lady, he gets it correct on the Tangros. Then Lady gets a kill, which means he either has to sack, I think, Pex or Lele. And then Greninja comes back in and gets another kill, which means it kills the Lady. And then Landris cannot win the game from there. I don't see a way how... Yeah, I don't see a way how Trosco can win this. So either click off quick here hoping for the Greninja stay in or well yeah like Sabella always goes to Tangos like I said and he pretty much can't lose. <laughs> I think it's pretty like obvious right how this is gonna play out. Like I don't see a way out for Trosco unless Sabella stays in with Gren here and because if he loses Gren then Megalady plus yeah Megalady can potentially win him the game. Uh, Trosco can win Trosco the game if the Greninja goes down because it easily beats um, it beats the Pex especially because it's low it also beats the Tang yeah, there was like one scenario earlier like two or three turns so he does go Tang was expecting either Earthquake or U-turn which is always the play like I said and now you just click HPIs here if you Sabella you don't even have to double or anything you just spam HPIs um, or knock off. Knock off is also a fine play because if you knock off the choice scarf, yeah, he does knock off. Because now he lost the choice scarf, and now Greninja he, he sacks something now, and then Greninja comes in, clicks Ice Beam twice, and the game is over. Um, yeah, he sacks Lily. Uh, he might double out here. He just earthquakes again, kills the Lily. Now Greninja comes out. Ice Beam is gonna pick up the kill on the Landers, and Ice Beam is gonna pick up the kill on the Ladi. So Greninja MVP. Um, yeah, these type of teams that like kind of rely on Ferrothorn and or Clef to check Gren, yeah, that's that's not that reliable. So um, bring Protein Greninja if you want to win an OU. Is all I'm saying. Like if the opponent doesn't have a Pax, it can do a lot of work usually. And even if they have a Pax, um, you can like run some lures for Pax, or you can, if you're that worried about it, you can run um, either the extra sentry or the dig on your Greninja. You just have to play. It correct where you like bluff it that you don't have it maybe and then potentially catch your opponent off guard later in the game like that's something I like to do but yeah grads uh, Sabella on the win what's it called that's something I like to do like let's say you have a protein Greninja with Z-move that um, Okus talks the packs there after some chip damage then I'd usually um, I'd usually always if I, always if I have Greninja in on packs I'd always double it out I would do that like three or four times and I like I would try to make my opponent think that I can't touch his packs and I have to do that you have to do that multiple times just so they think he can't touch me. <laughs> and by some if the opponent is like super good, they might keep scouting for it, but usually it would work. But yeah, um Specs Lily and Protein Gren being busted pretty much in this game. And Megalady um could have could have won the game for Trusco if he Yeah, the heck sucked a bit. He says it was a roll that on the clef, but what would the clef have even done to the to the Lele? Would he have clicked Moonblast, which wouldn't have done that much? Or would he have clicked T-Wave? If he had T-Wave on the clef, then it kind of sucks that it was a roll, but I'm pretty sure that roll might have been even or even in Sabella's favor. And I don't think the spadef drops matter too much, but they are obviously annoying for Trusco. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Great Sabella on the win, and peace out, friends. Stay tuned for more content. Goodbye.